ready to go, we'll stand in the Pledge of Allegiance. Currently, there are five tenants in the center, 
and I'm hoping that we can increase the vibrancy of the center and attract another four tenants there. Um, as it is, as the sign is currently, it is impossible to give everybody space on that signage and put a name on the center. Um, so in order for me to do that successfully, I need a big sign. And in order for any tenant to be attractive <coughs> to a center like that, it needs to be in a place where drivers driving up and down that street can actually see the sign. Um, there has been no investment made on that center for the past 10 years. Currently, I have already spent close to $200,000 renovating that uh, street with absolutely no guarantee that I will get anybody in there. Um, one of the reasons I want to do this is to make the area more safe and to increase vibrancy in the area, just increase footfall. Because um, I don't know if any of you have driven past the center in the past uh, 20, 25 days, but we just did a $70,000 LED upgrade to that center. And if you ever went and watched a movie in that theater before, it was very unsafe to park there. And now with all the lights, you can free pretty much stand anywhere in the center, and it's, it's safe. The idea is that we're not, I'm not actually asking for very high rents there. It's not that we're just trying to increase vibrancy so that there is good uh, traffic to the area. I, I strongly believe that if we can get such a major center filled up, we can allow other businesses to get attracted and it will overall increase the economic impact to the city of law, not just I mean, frankly, the amount of money I've already spent on this center, I won't recover that even if this gets full. Uh, the idea is basically to increase that. So for small businesses, uh, signage is very important. It is impossible for them to have an advertising budget large enough that you know the signage doesn't matter. So it's currently 120 square feet as it is. It's just in the wrong location. In addition to this, because the uh, center is four different lots, I can technically put four different 72 square feet signs, which in my opinion is ridiculous, frankly. It, and it defeats the purpose of what we call um, visual pollution. So instead of doing that, I'm trying to create an identity for a very important piece of property in law. Um, and this is another reason that center has not had a name for the past 15 years. People refer to it now as the center where tractor supply is, but it's never had a name. So I'd like to give it a name, and I'd like to move it, just move the sign to where people can see. So I really request you to take that into consideration, because I am personally trying my level best to increase vibrancy there. We've done a massive job of uh, improving the parking lot, uh, where, you know, if you had ever dri driven there before, it seemed like a bomb site. You could, you could crack your car. Now you park, you have enough space in front of the movie theater, you have in front of all the small businesses there, in front of tractor supply. You can park your car and you can drive your car inside the center without any problem. So, and that has all happened now in the past four months, four or five months that I've had the center. So it's again my sincere request. Uh, please approve this and uh, again I thank you very much for taking this time and I'm sorry it's so late in the day so thank you thank you Andy you want to walk us through is this the time for other yeah. public hearing oh, or no go ahead All right. thank you good evening Andy Johnston uh, 2891 Court Drive uh, Lowell Michigan I rise to support this uh, variance request uh, as well uh, to replace the sign on this property. Um, I was going to point out, but I don't know how be much better I could do than the applicant, that the current sign is already 120 square feet. Um, and so we're really just trying to move this sign into a better location. And I want to commend the owner of the property for the significant investment that he's already made uh, to support important, this important commercial area. 
in Lowell. In his application, if you had the time to review it, I think it goes over in quite detailed circumstances around uh, why proper signage is needed for this property and addressing the six, six different conditions uh, that need to be met uh, for this variance. Personally, as an area resident, I can attest to that bombed out parking lot that was there um, and really happy to see investment being made on this crucial section of um, Lowell's commercial corridor. And I just want to ask for your support of this variance and continue business growth in the Lowell community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, in order to approve a variance, there are six standards within the zoning ordinance, and you guys and the Board of Zoning Appeals have to find that each of the six standards are met. So if you as a group find that five of six are met, that's not good enough. It has to be all six. Um, so what I'm going to do is just walk through e each of the standards, kind of give you my impression on each one. Um, and then I guess if you guys, yeah, I think one at a time, uh, the board should talk about each one, come to some kind of a consensus as to whether or not it's satisfied and we'll move on to the next one. If we find that he doesn't meet one of them before we're done, I think we should keep going for the sake of doing this completely, we'll do all six standards no matter what, and then make a decision at the end of, of the meeting. So the first standard um, is that there are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applying to the property in question that do not apply generally to other properties in the same zoning district. Exceptional or extraordinary circumstances include exceptional narrowness, shallowness, or shape of a specific property on the effective date of this chapter, or by reason of exceptional topographic conditions or other extraordinary situation of the land, a building, or structure, or by reason of the use or development of the property immediately adjoining the property in question, the level of enforcement of this ordinance, of the requirements of this ordinance, would involve practical difficulties. Um, so what's that, what that's kind of saying is that there has to be something really unique and unusual about the property that doesn't apply to everything else around it. It has to be unique and different and un unusual. Um, as you guys know, there's, there are four separate parcels involved here, um, totaling about nine acres or so. Uh, the, ex the existing sign, and, and, and there's just one, it's, it's located on 21, 2111 West Main, it's just east of the Arby's sign, and they just, Arby's just redid their sign recently too. Um, there are, I guess, a couple things that are a little different about this one that are not the same as as other commercial properties in this area. The most notable one of that is is, is the setback. Right, I mean, these built the, the main strip center aside from the movie theater is set back um, quite a distance, eighty or more feet from the right of way. Whereas I think your zoning ordinance allows a thirty-five or forty foot setback. Um, so I agree that it is a little unusual in that respect. Um, and two of those parcels, 2163 and 2155, don't even have frontage on Main Street technically. Um, two of those parcels are basically landlocked, um, and two of them have frontage. The, the theater has got frontage, and then the, the parcel where tractor supply is also has frontage on Main Street. The two in between uh, don't have any frontage at all. So um, otherwise, there aren't any unusual you know, environmental considerations. We've all been by there many times. It's flat as can be. Um, there aren't a lot of trees or anything like that. So to me, that particular standard is kind of um, it's kind of a mixed bag. I guess it's up to you guys to uh, discuss and determine whether or not the the development on the site and that the way that it's developed presents an extraordinary circumstance. I have a question. I'm new on ZBA. This is my first appeal, but. Um, Multi-tenant buildings, it doesn't matter if there's two tenants or a hundred tenants, you're limited to 72 square feet? Yes. Okay. And the ordinances changed recently uh, to lower the amount of square footage that was allowed at some point in the past? Yeah, I think it was 2013 or so, um, a new sign ordinance was, was, was adopted. It did, it's more restrictive in general as far as area goes and part of the uh, part of, of the reason for that, I think, was that there's just, I mean, sometimes, especially on kind of strip commercial corridors, the signage can be totally overwhelming. Visually, it gets 
cluttered looking. It's not a, just visually, it's not particularly appealing. Um, and so I think a lot of that went into that that ordinance. The other thing that I will say is that the ordinance does also include um, a specific provision for replacing a sign that's not conforming. So uh, he can actually, in this case, because the existing sign is 120 square feet, he can replace it with another sign that is also not conforming, but that new sign has to be 33% smaller. So he can actually still exceed the 72 square feet and get to about 80 square feet. Uh, probably still smaller than he wants, but that is something that is feasible under the current ordinance. But yeah, it is overly, uh, overall, it is more restrictive than the previous one. And it's been in place for, yeah, about four years now. We've had one other variance request with regard to signage on this new ordinance uh, that was denied by the board uh, a few years ago. That was for the, one of the auto parts stores on Main Street. Yeah, it's tough because these larger properties are sitting there and they're not getting used. And so the, the practical thing to do is to split them up into smaller places. Right. But then you need more signage, which is tough. But as a, a business owner, I just really like to do what we can to help businesses survive and, and become a more vibrant town, but we'll work our way through this. And Amy, I, I'm new too. I have a question. So his, his thing was he wanted to move the sign as well. Mm -hmm. So are we dealing with both of them then? Well, or is it the location of the sign isn't really the issue here. Okay. Um, you know, he, I don't know exactly where he wants to put it, but there's, there's a fair amount of flexibility in the ordinance that allows him to put it all over the place. Um, it can be, he can leave it in his current location, he can move it closer to the road to a point. Um, you have to be, a, I forget, maybe six feet or something off the right of way. Right now it's like 20 feet off, off of, of, of the property line. So he can move it around if he wants to. The, the main issue That's here, not the main issue is the size. Yes, the okay. size is Thank the you. issue. Yep. Thank you for Chief. But I, I'd like to ask a question because we are talking about four different properties, but it's one parcel. Could he potentially have four 72 square foot signs on that? Uh, he have three by my count. Well, I'm seeing 2111 West Main, mm -hmm. 2175, 2163, and 2155. Yeah. Could each business potentially have their own large sign and really make it cluttered? No. Um, he can, the ordinance allows for one sign uh, per, one sign, uh, one freestanding sign per parcel on the side that faces a public street. So 2175, which is a theater, faces Main Street, so he could have one sign on that property. Um, 2111, which is tractor supply, faces Main Street, so he could have a second sign on that property. Then he could even have a third sign, also 72 square feet in area, on Ridgeview, where the side entrance is to tractor supply. Now, I'm assuming here that that's probably not desirable because the traffic on Ridgeview is not going to be what it is on Main Street, but theoretically he could have three of them um, on the site, but because 2163 and 2155 don't have frontage on Main Street, um, for zoning purposes we would kind of combine 2155 and probably 2111 sort of into one parcel, and then 2163 and 2175 <coughs> kind of group those together as, to be the other parcel so he could have two separate signs on Main Street, yeah. At 72 square feet. At 72, actually one, one of them could be 80 and the other one could be 72. Okay, but you could do up to three. <coughs> if you wanted to put the one on Ridgeview, yeah, that could be a three. Yeah, was Arby's originally part of the same property and it was split off and sold off by a previous owner? I don't know. Did that, was that Roy Rogers at one time, or Hardy's? That's Hardy's. 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 Hardy's, that's right, yeah. I think it was split off, now I recall that. That may have changed the configuration. Goodrich, Goodrich had sold yeah. that, you know. And then Goodrich sold that off, as I recall. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, do you get anything? No, I have nothing. I sat on that in 2013, so I'm pretty familiar with it. <coughs> Do we move on to second standard? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Second. Have any more discussion on the first? We'll get the second. Second standard is that the condition or situation of the specific piece of property for which the variance is sought is so not of so general or recurrent nature as to make 
reasonably practical the formulation of a general regulation for such conditions or situations. That's a kind of verbose way of saying that this isn't, you know, is this something that we should just fix with an ordinance amendment instead of granting a special exception, which is what a variance is. Um, a lot of times in zoning what we see is that applicants, different people come in with the same re re with the same re request over and over and over again. Um, and they want a variance for a front yard setback or a sign or whatever. And, it, and so when we see these things coming in over and over and over again, that's, a, that's kind of a clue to staff and to a planning commission or, or a, a ZBA to say, hey, instead of just continually authorizing people to violate the ordinance, maybe we should just adjust the ordinance so it's more accommodating to what we think people should be able to do anyways. Because if you're granting the variances, you should probably just make it legal instead of granting a special exception. That's the question here. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I think it was the O'Reilly or something a few years ago came in with a variance request for a sign. Um, that one I was, I was pretty strongly opposed to. Um, I just didn't think they provided any, any, good ju any good justification for it at that time. And that one was, was denied, and that's the only sign variance that we've had for a while. Um, working with Sue just on some of the applications, we get, you know, people complaining about it quite a bit, and we don't have to kind of pester them into bringing them down into compliance. I think Arby's was one of them. They didn't want to make it smaller, but they did. Eventually, there's been a bunch of others over the years that have kind of done that same thing, where after a while, it's okay, okay, fine, and they kind of comply with the ordinance, and then, and then, and then they're off. So, um, I don't know if, if, if you guys, two requests in the last probably two or three years is enough to ask the Planning Commission to reconsider this, but it's up for discussion. Well, I think the difference between this one and O'Reilly's, O'Reilly's bought a square lot, put a building on it, and got a sign out front, where here we've got a strip mall where a piece was split off from the front. It's a little different situation. I think this is somewhat unique because of that. It was actually AutoZone. Oh, AutoZone. Mm -hmm. um, how many other places would this affect them? Because like he's saying, this is unique because those two are so far back. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it like it's going to affect a lot of other businesses? Um, it's not going to... It's not going to affect any other business. The thing we have to be careful of, and we'll get to this a little bit later too, is that, you know, absent finding a really good reason yeah, I that to, change. To, to, to make a, a special exception, you risk basically intentionally or unintentionally making that special exception for everybody else. If you're going to say yes to one person, how, how are you going to say no to the next guy who comes in in the same situation? So um, if you're inclined to approve it, I think you know, you'll need to be careful to document why this is different from the others, because there are other multi-tenant businesses in the city, obviously. Um, and so if one of them comes in in one year or two years or five years, and they say, well, you know, they got a great big giant sign down by uh, the theater, and you're telling me that I can only have 72 square feet, what gives, we have to be able to explain what the situation was that made that different and unique. Otherwise, you are kind of effectively <coughs> doing it permanently, so. I guess you give something like that. It's the, the number of tenants that are in a particular strip mall can dictate how large that sign can possibly be down the road. So if I have four tenants, I don't need as much signage, so therefore it's going to be X square number of feet per tenant. Yeah, I mean, the Planning Commission could certainly look at something like that and doing it on a per tenant basis instead of just putting a hard cap on it. Right. I mean, there are pros and cons, I guess, to every, every way of, yeah. of doing it. I mean, in that, in that instance, you could end up with potentially an you know, unnecessarily large sign or something that's just too big for the site or something is possible. I don't but know. But you'd have to have a cap then of, you know, what is the biggest you could go then if you figured out how many times you had Probably. I mean, I would, I would recommend that. I mean, right. a so lot of... Right, so it just wouldn't go, you yeah. know, on and on. Yeah. Right. Um, do we move on to the third standard, Jay? Uh, I question your 100 feet off the roadway, so I went on Kent County GIS. It's uh, 349.7 okay. feet back from the entrance. 
where their sign is located to the storefront. So I, I'm trying to see his point as uh, the small signs on the building might be an issue. Maybe a larger sign at the road might be uh, splitting with him. I know O'Reilly's is only um, about 75 feet off the road, 50 feet off the road. Mm -hmm. I can measure that, but I just pulled it right up and 349.7 feet. Yeah, the signs, um, the signs on the face of the building are definitely hard to read from the street because it is it is way back off there, which which, which you guys know. Um, so one of the reasons it, all of the commercial properties in the city um, are allowed to have a sign on the building, well, most of them are allowed to have a sign on the building and a sign, a freestanding sign out front. The only place where you can't do that is downtown. Um, so they are allowed to have multiple kinds of signs. But yeah, this. This is probably one of the ones where they're farthest off the street. I mean, it's. it's I don't think there's it's, anything that is near that depth off the road. Anything else before we move on to the third standard? No. Oh, go ahead, Andy. Um, third standard says that such variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property rate similar to that possessed by other properties in the same zoning district and in the vicinity possibility of increased financial returns shall not of itself be deemed sufficient to warrant a variance. Um, there are, right across the street, there are two other multi-tenant businesses. Um, I don't know how big their signs are. I suspect they're close to the limit, if not a little over it. Um, the buildings themselves are way closer to the road. and. Um, you know, it's what's what's difficult about this one specifically with regard to signage is, is that sentence that says the, the possibility of increased financial return shall not by itself be enough to warrant a variance. So just because it's going to make the applicant more money, um, that by itself isn't good enough to grant somebody a special, a special exception to the ordinance. Other questions on number three or? Want to keep going? Anybody have a comment? Keep going, Andy. Number four, the variance will not be significantly detrimental to adjacent property in the surrounding neighborhood. Um, that would actually, I agree with that. Um, you know, I don't, this is, it's a commercial area and I don't, I don't foresee a slightly larger sign having a major detrimental impact. Um, one of the things that we'll, that we'll get to a little bit later that we already kind of talked about is how many signs he'd have currently. And even if he, he, even if he had four signs along Main Street, which he can't do, but even if he had four, that wouldn't be that much different than what we permit already on the south side of the street. Um, I mean, on the south side of the street, there's a sign about every 100 feet or so. And he's got like 700 feet in front of it or something like that. He's looking at one or, one or two signs overall so um, the density if you want to use that word of signage as far as how frequently they, they, they appear up on, on that north side of the street whether there's one or two is going to be not that significant compared to what's permitted everywhere else would it be more uh, illumination by putting up that larger sign that could be detrimental I just want to make sure what we're, we're yeah possibly I mean I don't know exactly how the how, how it's how a new one would be designed, and we do have standards that, that say that it can't, you know, glare light on adjacent properties and all that. But I mean, a bigger sign is a bigger sign, and so it's going to be brighter and it's going to be more visible than a smaller sign just because it's bigger. Do Do you know what style of sign you're looking at? In other words, uh, you're going to ring it in LED lighting and make it super bright, or are you going to you know, use the plastic inserts with the LED lights on the inside and light it up that way. We're just going to use plastic inserts and put LEDs. LED is just basically standard now. Uh, just it lasts longer, it's less harsh. Right. And to just give you an example of that, um, the LED lights that I've used in the parking lot, they are the most expensive LED lights you can get. I could have used a cheaper one. The only reason I use this quality, and this is how uh, conscientious I am, is because these are the only LED lights you can actually stare at without burning your eyes. 
So these are the same lights, the quality of lights that have been used at the Meyer in Cascade. And I am definitely not Meyer. So uh, I'm very, very uh, aware of anybody who visits as to how this will affect them uh, mentally and emotionally. So I, I know that it's a very different way. I couldn't use lights that are half the price, and they are LEDs also, but they would burn your eyes. So the idea behind this sign is the same, is to use LEDs that are warm, so they're in my thing. And it'll be the same with Tango sign. Okay, thank you. Uh, the fifth standard is that the variance will not impair the intent and purpose of the ordinance. And that's what we kind of touched on that a, a, a little bit is that when the when the, the Board of Zoning Appeals makes a, makes a decision on, on, on a variance, there's kind of a precedence setting aspect that you have to pay attention to because absent a good reason, you are kind of setting yourself up to approve the same thing over and over and over again. And um, I, I, that's not something that I encourage you to do with, with, with signage specifically because we do get a lot of requests and everyone wants to have a sign that's bigger than what's allowed. And it's, I mean, Sue probably gets more grief from applicants than I do, but, um, you know, there's always a back and forth between Sue and I, her, the applicant, and the applicant and I in, in, in conversations just to make sure that they understand the ordinance and this is what you're allowed to do. And, I mean, I guess you can apply for a variance, but I don't know if they'll get it, so you might want to really think about that. And usually they end up just um, finding a way to satisfy the standards of the ordinance. Um, you know, the, the other part that comes into this is when you read the intent and purpose of that of that signed chapter, it talks about, um, you know, it, it, it talks about things like eliminating visual chaos and clutter, which is some of the stuff we talk about. And when, when we did this, uh, the signed ordinance the first time, and Jim, you probably remember a lot of that conversation centered around, I think, just reducing the just kind of overwhelming nature of driving down streets like Main Street and lots of other commercial corridors all across the country, frankly, that have you know, huge signs and and it's just not an inviting place to <coughs> walk and it's confusing and it doesn't look great and it wasn't the, 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 the look and the aesthetic I don't think that was desired in the city at that time. So, um, you know, it's, I don't, really have a strong opinion either way on this. I think that you know, he could have one sign that's 120 square feet or two separate signs without a variance, 172 and 180 square feet. You know, it would be more signage and two separate signs. I don't know if that's more, you know, if, if to you guys, I don't know if one big sign or two smaller signs is worse. That's kind of up, <laughs> up, up for you to decide. Um, but I think the more of the point with this standard is, is the idea of, of setting a precedent in the ordinance that you're not kind of roping yourself into doing it for a whole bunch of different applicants. Refresh my memory, is that a two pillar sign today? That's up quite high? Yeah, maximum height of 20 feet. 20 feet, that's the max. Yeah. And so if, if, you, were, if you were granted the variance, you would still be limited to the 20 feet. Foot high. Twenty foot high. Yeah. You just have to go this way because of the clearance that we need to see is returning in and out. Right. I mean, so he could. Yeah. Of that. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, it's up to him to to design it however he wants. If if he decide to to grant it, um, the only thing that that we would vary would be the area, and um, you know the height and everything else would still apply. And if he wants to modify the landscape on the base of it. That's fine. If, if 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 you wanted to do a ground sign and keep it real short, that's fine too. I mean, it, that part's totally up to him. It's just a strictly a question of area. Anything, Mike? I can just tell you from as a, a business owner, signage is so important to you because if people can't find you, um, it's a tough deal. And, and he currently has something similar to this. I think it is an unusual situation. It's not a, a new property on a square lot because it's tucked so far back behind another building. It's, it is a very unusual situation. Um, 
The last standard says that the immediate practical difficulty causing the need for the variance was not created by any action of the applicant. Uh, that's a very common standard we see in ordinances all over the place, which we call a self-created hardship. Um, and in this case, I don't think, I mean, he didn't intentionally set his building, you know, 300 whatever feet off the road to uh, create the need for a variance. So um, my opinion in this case was that this one, you know, this, this standard I felt was pretty clearly satisfied. So that summarizes the report. Um, I think what you guys should do is, is, is a board is talk about each, each, each of these standards and kind of decide one at a time, is it met, yes or no, just kind of a general consensus. You don't have to have a motion on each one. Um, but if you're going to approve it or not, or uh, deny it, I think you just have a motion to that effect. Make sure you state your reasons why you're doing either way. And then also, if you're inclined to approve it, I would just suggest, um, you know, allowing, if you're going to allow to, if you're going to decide to allow the sign, for example, then I would say have some conditions on it. Like 100, 120 square feet would be the maximum size, and you wouldn't be permitted to have another sign somewhere else later on, because that would obviously defeat mm -hmm. the purpose of what you're doing here. So, so that I'll turn it back over to you and let you guys deliberate. All right, thank you, Andy. Uh, of the six standards, standard one, um, any concerns on that? Well, the condition of the sign, I think, should have to be approved by Andy of the new sign that he'd want to develop, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need to take... Yeah, yeah, this, so if if you were to approve the, the variance, that just basically allows them to apply, essentially, so... So then it'd go through you again. Yep. And, okay, so I'm, I'm gathering he, A, definitely wants to move the sign. So the size that he has now is... Is that in compliance? No. That was grandfathered in? Correct. That was probably in compliance at the time it was installed. But then. So you said back in 2013 then? Yeah, I think I think 2013 was when, when, when the new sign ordinance. Mm -hmm. Chapter 20, which is the chapter in your ordinance that addresses sign, that thing was replaced in its entirety. And I think it was 2013. So this sign was probably in existence way before then. And so the standard, if, I don't know what the standard was at that time specifically, but it was probably legal when it was constructed. And because the new sign restrictions are a little bit more restrictive than the previous one, it, it made a, not just him, but a bunch of other ones non-conforming. So then let's just say that obviously, if this was to go forward with that, then he would be exempt from getting another sign anytime down the road. Well, that would be my suggestion, yeah, if you're going to allow him to have a 120 square foot sign to accommodate all of the businesses in, 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 yeah, for the four parcels, instead of having two smaller signs, then I would suggest a, a condition to that effect. Or three, he's allowed, but we should ask if he's willing to do that. You hate to give up future mm -hmm. signage. Well, um, what I am planning to do, and I'll be very clear about this, is the movie theater is on another side. RVs is in the middle, and then the rest of the center is on one side. So I am putting up a sign for the movie theater, because the movie theater has no ability to tell people that this is the entrance. So, I, and that sign I am complying as a 48 square feet sign. So not even a 72 square feet, I'm doing a 48 square feet, because I don't want to blow that sign up. And there's nothing on that sign besides the movie theater, and a name for the center. So that people can start at least saying, we are going here. So it's very hard for me to combine all of that on one side. So there will be a sign for the movie theater. I've already applied for that. Uh, they come. So you're looking at 168 square feet. That is with a, total. With 120 plus the 40. Yeah. Which is pretty much what is there. There's a 120 foot sign there. And then I'm giving the movie theater an opportunity. Just to let you know, this year was one of the worst years for the movie theater. We've removed a few trees on our own volition so that there's an opportunity for that theater to survive. 
there are new seats going in to that movie theater because if we don't get traffic, that theater will shut. And that is the only theater that is in this city. So if, you, if that fails, unfortunately, anybody who wants to watch a movie will have to drive out at least 30 to 40 minutes to get to a movie theater. So it's not, and I'm not, uh, I'm just trying to somehow make them survive. So again, like, you know, you said there is, uh, yes, there is an economic benefit, maybe at some point, but when and where that is is, is non-existent at this point in time. So just to let you know, it is a strong community, but there's not that much traffic there, uh, and it's it's very hard in retail right now to attract anybody. It's just yeah, and our efforts so far for I've had the center for six months, and we I have a list of 45 people that I've approached to try to come into the center. Not one person has said yes. In fact, due to our efforts, you have a new tenant, Juiced Vapor, which has come into a center down the road, which is closer, I think it's called Ridgemore Center or something. That is closer there. So that Juiced Vapor also would not have been there if we would have not made the effort, which I'm happy for. I'm really happy because if all of that Main Street rises up, it affects everybody. Not only me, it affects you downtown here. So. I'm happy, Andy, with the restriction, it's fine, but I, I do need to give that movie theater a chance. So I will put that 48 square foot sign for them. And I need a multi-tenant sign. Uh, so again, these are small tenants. That Hong Kong buffet, that Snap Fitness, that, uh, uh, you know, Snap Fitness might be a, a, uh, a multi-tenant large organization, but it's a franchisee. It's not, it's like somebody taking a subway. It's not actually subway that's putting in the money, it's like one guy who's putting it. And Hong Kong Buffet themselves are also going through trouble, by the way. He's trying very hard to try to get somebody else to take it over. So I'm really facing a very uphill battle to try to, to make this happen so that you have some vibrancy in there. So it's again, it's just a request. So please just think about all of those things before you decide. Right, so you really can't give up other side streets because you need it for the movie theater. I, I, what about Ridgemore on the side street? Would I, you give up that sign? I, I will only put out two signs, sir. I will put out that one multi-tenant sign so the people behind our homes yeah. has a chance. And again, the reason I need this bigger sign is because tractor supply takes up a lot of space on that sign. And I cannot go to tractor supply and tell them, hey, put up a small sign because they are the main tenant there. They will say, okay, fine, we'll put up a small sign, but when three years later, we'll decide to move out. And I'll have a big box center there of 11 and a half thousand square feet I can't fill. Frankly, there was a huge grocery store there back in the day that left because Maya came in. And I have a box there of nine and a half thousand square feet that nobody wants to take. In, I have done, I've put up a new storefront in front of it. I've done landscaping in front of it. And I have Colliers as my broker. Well, and we have shown everybody, anybody who is worth their salt, nobody wants to come there. I'm trying really hard. So we'll have two signs, one multi-tenant sign and one for the movie theater. But I have no interest in adding more. And all of these signs are very expensive. They are $15,500 for me to put up a movie theater sign. And they're not giving me any money for this. The movie theater is not adding one cent. They are just saying, hey, thank you so much to help us on our way because we really don't have the money for it. So, so I'm sorry, that was a winded answer, but right. Well, that's why I wanted to ask when they wanted to give up future signage, you can't because the movie theater needs I can give up the sign on the side. Yeah. I, I don't mind, I won't put up. I, I, I Frankly, I won't put up a third sign. It's not like I'm trying to just, I, I do this for fun that I'm just gonna put up signs. It's to mm -hmm. give people a chance. So, right, that's my long winded answer, sorry. All right. okay. Any other comments on that? Uh, do we feel that uh, we should approve number one? We're going to do each one, all six. So. Yeah, I feel it's unusual circumstances because of the location that that far off the road, other buildings in front of it. That we met that requirement. I'll support that, Greg. So let me 
and number two. Uh, okay, number two. Um, any comments on that one? I think that follows the same that the condition or situation of a specific piece of property it, it's yeah. 359 feet off the road and, and signs on the building are visible from the street yep. i agree i agree mm -hmm. this, this is is the standard that tests whether or not we should just amend the ordinance to fix the problem and if the answer to that question is yes then the standard wouldn't be met Right, but there are what other properties would we amend it for that are 350 feet off the road? Yeah, in that case, not many. Um, that, that's why I think okay. I just want to make sure that the understanding the purpose. And, it is, and two of the properties are landlocked, correct? Yes. Okay. 2163 and 2155. So I feel that that one has, has met its requirements. I'll make a motion we accept that one. Mm -hmm. support. Thank you. Number three. Uh, <coughs> any comments or concerns on number three? I think that there's a little problem with our zoning ordinance that there's no allowance for a place that has 10 tenants versus a place that has two, like the properties across the street. Those, I think, have two or three tenants in those buildings. But um, in hindsight, I think we should have considered how many tenants are in these buildings to, to what is allowed for signage. Well, I, th I think we can take that back into the Planning Commission and, and maybe we look at this as a, as a change or a variance to, to the existing. Yeah, there's two sections of the ordinance that we'll be looking at in the spring. Signs is one of them. Um, Actually, not for this reason, but just because we have to make some changes to remove some content-based regulations, which we'll be studying in, in greater detail, but we can certainly incorporate whatever suggestions you guys have when we do that. Right. Well, this property is kind of unique because there's nobody right. else that has 10 tenants that I can think of in town. I would think the other one uh, by Rite Aid has quite a few tenants, but again, they're not 300 some odd feet off the road. So, I mean, are those really the only two that we'd be looking at that have that many tenants in our right, five park. or six there. Yeah. Chief, can you look that one up, see how far back there it is? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably similar. I would almost think it is. Yeah. The BCP the only other one I can think of is the vacant parcel right next to it, and that's because I talked to the owner last month and it's been for sale. Build the suit for 25 years and mm -hmm. still nobody's bought it. It's not for sale, only for lease. Right. Yep. I'm trying to get all these in there, but all these ones to buy it, they won't sell it. They'll lease it to you. And that's the problem. I think those are just a couple of unique properties. Yeah. Exactly. I can't think of other than those two, anything else that would. Pizza place, I got Admiral. There's three or four right there. Yeah, but they're right. I mean, I know they're right there, but it's still an L shape that you really can't see it coming into town the, the back, too. But yeah, first cleaners is pretty far back, too. Yes, I don't know how feet, but that just that's far back. Yeah, yeah, but he, I think he's got a sign on his main street that he has his parcels yeah, yeah. right weird. He's got a good sign up there, yeah, because yep. mm -hmm. he had that front.